When Rage 2 was announced, I was super excited. I was practically over the moon. They brought out Andrew WK, who can always get you in the mood with that boost of adrenaline. And they announced that, yeah, Rage 2 is finally coming after so long. Not being developed by id Software though this time, Bethesda have put Avalanche in charge of it. Now they're the developers behind the Just Cause series, which gives the perfect mix of environment and user interaction, putting them so perfectly together. And when you can do that in a game, especially in Just Cause, where you can cause mass amounts of mayhem, where you can attach your car to anything, destroy whatever you want, drive whatever you want, attach rocket boosters to people and send them flying off to the distance, being able to do that in Rage 2 would be fantastic. And the fact that marketing campaign alluded to all that, I was just super ecstatic. But did they pull it off? No. No, they didn't. Put simply, no. Well, thank you for watching, and now please sit, sit, sit. We've got a lot to talk about. Let's check it out. Now, listening back to the audio from <laughs> what you're about to hear, I just want to say that I do not believe Rage 2 is a terrible game. It could have been a hell of a lot more though. There could have been an amazing story, great side missions, and just a very rich open world. But anyway, no more stalling, let's get to it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to tackle in Rage 2 is the story. So, if you're not familiar with the story of Rage 1, and you really don't need to be, is that the asteroid Apophis crashed into Earth, wiping out all of humanity, when mutants, bandits, and the Authority, the big figureheads that were always dicks trying to kill you, uh, came to be and are trying to control the wasteland. That's about it. So this takes place 30 years after that where you play as Walker, who you get to choose from at the start, either a female or a male character, and from there you're attacked by the authority, you get a bit of gunplay, you find a ranger suit, and then someone close to you dies at the hands of the authority, and the whole story is about your basically revenge and trying to take down this big evil, I'd say, corporation. So from here, that's the main story beat, that's the main meat that we've got. And from here you go out and you interact with some characters from the previous game, Lusum Hagar, and I cannot remember his name, but he's super creepy, super cool, and riding on a mutant. So you go out and you've got a choice right from the start, which of these you tackle first. Now it does give you the option of, hey, this one's a little bit easier and everything in the world is ranked. But you go to these characters, they'll make you run a mission, and then you'll come back to them, and then you'll run another mission, and then you'll have to do some filler content to unlock the next mission, and then it's literally the end of the game. I'll show you now, this is the main tier of the story. So you've got the initial mission, a second mission, you've got to unlock level 5 to unlock the final mission, and then doing all three of the final missions for these characters unlocks the main bad guy, and that's it folks. So I was actually expecting a fair bit more from this game, especially because the final trailer they released was ragging on Rage 1. It was uh, a comment that someone made about, oh, I fought a bunch of bad guys and then that was the ending, you know, credits rolled. Bit of a spoiler, that exact same thing happens here, which I'll get into in a little bit with my issues with the marketing. So yeah, I was expecting a fair bit more from the story, but you know what? I love a good old action game, just pure action. I don't know what the hell I just said there, pure. Anyway, back on track. So the gunplay in this game is phenomenal, but like I said in the intro, it's just not up to what I was expecting from the crazy craziness that Avalanche do in their other games. Like Just Cause, there's very little environmental interaction besides blowing up some fuel barrels that you find, or actually fuel tanks, which is one of the main missions. <laughs> and let me get onto that for a second. So, I said the main story was nothing special, and that can be forgiven if everything on the side is absolutely grand and just mingles really well with the rest of the gameplay. Uh, the side missions... There's, there's very little to them, it's all just go out, kill these, or go out, kill these, and destroy this, or go out, kill these, unlock an arc. 
which yes is good because of the gunplay is absolutely fantastic but you're expecting more and then even when you're driving around your character says oh looks like just another bandit camp which it, okay the game seems like it's self-aware that it just has no substance in it at all but that's that's the problem you you can't just be self-aware and not fix the problem I really wanted to enjoy this game more than I did, and don't get me wrong, it is a fairly good game, like action-wise, just mindless shooter reaction, but do not come into this if you're expecting a major story, or something that's going to hold your attention for more than the six hours it took me to do the campaign. So through most of this game you will be travelling by car. Now this is good because the world is pretty open, but also bad in a way. I found many times that the points of interest that I want to get to, you can't drive your car up there. You'll set a, a nav point and it'll just say, hey, we're here, and you've got to find your own way. Exploration is cool. I approve of exploration in almost every single instance. But here, it's just, it's just nothing. It's so barren. Now, I say it's barren, but there are definitely some, like, really fun, cool things you will find out here. I decided I was going to try scale a mountain to get to the little question mark point and see what was there. And there I encountered two massive mutants. The thing was, I didn't even try, but they just glitched out. They were stuck behind a wall and I could just freely shoot at them. I decided, obviously, not to take the coward's way out and face them head on, which was a bit of a challenge. But there was nothing really to it. I could use my abilities, I could use my weapons, but it was just basically a battle of tag where I'd run behind a building, wait for them to walk around, which gave my abilities a chance to recharge. But again, it just really felt like it was missing something to these massive battles. Another thing about massive battles, so I was doing all the main story missions and there came a point where there was a boss battle. Not the main boss, but just one of the side bosses, and it was really freaking fun. It felt like a breath of fresh air, and things were really picking up. Until about 10 minutes later, where I had to fight the exact same boss again, and then two hours later into the game, was fighting the exact same boss again. I think I did that boss fight four times, without any variation, except for it having a little less or a little more health each time. It's just things like this that really get to me and really make this feel like an unfinished, rushed game. So alright, let's tackle the abilities. I'm gonna be honest, throughout my original playthrough of this game I did not find them all. I found it too tedious to wander the wasteland and find everything, and maybe that means this game just isn't my cup of tea. But the thing is, the abilities I found were really freaking cool. So you've got the ground smash, I can't remember what they're actually called, which gives you the ability to basically hover for a sec and then just pound the ground and just obliterate enemies. That was really fun. And there's another one where you can basically force push enemies and it does a lot of damage and it feels really cool in the mix of combat. The only problem is that from the get-go they've got these crazy cooldowns of about 30 seconds. So you'll get to use them once, and given the pace of the battle, you probably won't get to use them until you find the next set of enemies. Now you can recharge them in certain ways that I've found. You can reduce the cooldown times based on abilities that you purchase as well. But I found myself using them, but not using them enough as I'd like. They didn't feel like they were really brought into the core. And they just weren't developed in a way that the game really, you know, it didn't add to anything. I was really excited for them, and the same goes for the weapons. So in first person shooters you'll probably know that as you progress through the game you'll find these weapons, and they're usually conveniently located at points where tougher enemies are going to show up or the weapons will need to be used. In my first playthrough I couldn't be bothered going and exploring the entire world, doing these pointless mundane missions in order to find these weapons, and I think I finished the game with 4 weapons total. The only weapons I felt the need to use in the game was the shotgun and the assault rifle. The shotgun's awesome, and the alternate fire is kick-ass. Every gun seems to have a sign of an, sort of an alternate fire mode, which is just really cool what they've done there. But yeah, I just the assault rifle is basically your sniper rifle. There's no recoil, and it just can headshot everything super easy. I went back and I grabbed the other weapons because, hey, I thought, you know, I'd miss something, and they are fun to play with. 
But the fact that you don't encounter them through normal gameplay, hell, you don't even encounter all of the settlements during normal gameplay, just feels like there was something missing, like there's a big pacing issue. I know this is an open world game, but yeah, there's just a really weird issue with the pacing, and I just don't get it. The story missions end so abruptly, you miss out on a lot of content unless you really explore, and by content I mean weapons, and like some power upgrades. You're not missing any cool story beats. There are some characters you find in trader towns that yeah have these cool little things going on and you could do bounty missions but none of it adds to it. I didn't feel a connection with this game. Alright so let's talk about the art style. So from the trailers it seemed like it was gonna be this crazy colorful amazing looking game and as you've probably seen from what I'm showing you now yes there is a bit of color but everything is still super bland and the most color I'd say you see in this game is all interactive objects are pink bright pink that's about it yes there is some color everywhere in the world but nothing like what this trailer was showing which leads me to something that I don't know, I, I believe that the marketing department and the developers just weren't in tune. And potentially this game was developed and they realized, hey, there's not much here to set this game apart. Let's create this overly wacky, crazy world. So the marketing team got a hold of that, created these crazy trailers, all this crazy colorfulness, and the game just doesn't have it. You don't have these explosions of color like you see in the reveal trailer. And it just really seems out of place. Like we've been promised something in these trailers and the marketing department have obviously gone balls to the wall crazy trying to build this atmosphere. But the game doesn't have it. I just, I just don't get it. I'm, I don't know if we'll ever get an answer on that. And I might be wrong. Maybe I'm colorblind. Well, no, I'm not colorblind. But maybe I'm just not invested enough in the world to be paying attention to everything and trying to find the color. I thought that everything was going to be in my face craziness, and we just didn't get it. Okay, so on to the physics. There's a few weird things that I've seen in this game. The cars usually handle quite beautifully. There's a part early on the game where you have to do a race, and you're given an entirely different car that controls fairly differently to what you've been playing with. And up to this point, Apart from just driving around in the wasteland and reading the tooltips, you haven't had that much experience. And this race was incredibly frustrating. I'll show you a little clip here. And just, yeah, I could not handle it. There's so many physics problems here. Well, not problems, just bugs and stuff they can fix. There was another couple of times where I was caught in an explosion and ragdolled. But my character was just glitching all over the screen, flying all over the place, which obviously wasn't intentional. So, as I mentioned right at the start, there, ah, there's this thing with the original Rage. So, people complained that you fought all this way, you did all this stuff, you fought the authority, you went in, killed a bunch of bad guys, and basically the credits just rolled. Now... This is going to be a bit of a spoiler, but the story in this game is not much at all, to be honest. So, it's up to you whether you listen to the next minute or so or not, but really they did the exact same thing here, which feeds into the idea I had before about the marketing team and the developers not being together, working on this. It just doesn't seem right that they marketed that, hey, the Rage 1 ending was bullshit. And then they do the exact same thing. Of course, there is a tiny bit after the credits to give you a little more closure. But the end of the game, whether it was intentional and they thought it was a joke, or whether they just didn't realize what was going to happen when they did the exact same ending as the first Rage. Alright, so about time to wrap this up. I just want to say that I seem to be hanging absolute hell on this game. This is not a terrible game if you want something mindless to just go around and shoot stuff. But I usually like to get invested in stories and to be honest, you know, Just Cause 4, as I said in the intro, was a good game for mindless action because you had this massive cohesion between the environment and the user interaction. But this game just doesn't have it. But then again, it's not terrible. 
if you are just looking for some mindless fun, go play it, go explore, find all the weapons and have a cracking time just blowing stuff up. But don't go into it expecting something like Doom, where you've got this really cool campaign of tightly knit created levels. Or Just Cause, where you've got the massive just awesomeness of blowing everything up and tying everything together. I was a bit disappointed to be honest, but looking back, I spent a fair bit of time playing this game and I would have given up around the 4 hour mark if things just kept going the way they were going. So all in all, 6 out of 10. Go, try it, play it, I'd say wait for a sale, and wait for Rage 3, which I know, if they do make it, are gonna absolutely knock it out of the goddamn park. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you'd like, leave me a comment down below, we can have a little bit of a chat. Otherwise, I will see you next time.